So the Bible is telling us that the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. The spirit itself identifies. We identify with the spirit that we, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, are the children of God. That's right. We are the children of Israel. The Bible is telling us, Jesus Christ is telling us, that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, so-called black man, so-called black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman. So what is this truth that's going to set our people free? What we must understand is that it's more than just a freedom off of the slave plantations, because our people are not free today. So what's this truth that's going to free us? Read. Psalm chapter 119. Verse 142, uh -huh. thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So Christ is saying the truth shall set you free. Right? How you doing, brother? In an orange shirt. Come here, if you got a couple seconds. Let me talk to you for a second. So Christ is telling you that the truth is going to set you free, right? But when we read in Psalms, it's telling you that the law of God is the truth. Right. Right? So get John 8 and 32 again. John chapter 8 verse 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free they answered him we be Abraham's seed uh, so they're saying hey we're Abraham's seed already right read and we're never in bondage and we were never in bondage because a lot of our people today did not experience chattel slavery there still is some of our people dealing with that now though Especially the men and men and women that's in prison. But a lot of our people grow up thinking that they're not slaves. Read. And were never in bondage to any man. They never experienced bondage to any man. Read. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. So they're asking, how are you going to tell me that I'm going to be made free? I'm already free. Read. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you. Uh -huh. Whosoever committed sin, says whosoever committed what? Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. You are the servant of sin. Right now, what we're looking at as a nation of people is our people are servants. We're in bondage to our sins. So he's telling you, us bringing you back to God's law, statutes, and commandments is going to free you from that bondage. You understand? It's going to free you from the whoremongering. It's going to free you from the, the what, you drinking a beer? It's going to free you from the drunkenness. Right, right. You understand? It's going to free you from the coonery and the buffoonery that we see before us today. Yeah, that's right. Let me Deuteronomy 28, 28, man. Because brothers see men bringing out the Bible and think it's time to dance and play and think it's a joke. This is not the Christian church. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. So it's telling you the Lord shall smite thee with madness. It's madness for you to see men of the Lord with the Bible, you holding up a bed drinking and dancing and acting fool. Right. This is serious business right now. Hey, how right. you doing, brother? What's going on? What's your name, man? Hey, name, name is Marshall. Yeah, name how you Marshall. doing, man? I'm Yuwana Don. We Israel United in Christ. You know who we are? Oh, praise. So let me ask you a question, Marshall. Do you have any questions, first and foremost? Yeah, I thought, I'm you all day. You follow us daily. Okay. So it's hard for you to get the fringes done, and you need somebody to do it for you, right? That's why we're here. Give me um, gather yourselves together. Give me that. Well, let me show you something, bro. Because you're saying that the reason why you don't come in, or why you you know you're trying to work on getting your fringes together, right? Watch what the Most High God has, established, has um, ordered us to do. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Read Gather yourselves together. So the Most High God is telling the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans to gather themselves together. Read. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. So he's telling the nation on this earth here that is not desired. Let me ask you a question. What people on this earth here that is not desired by anybody else? What about, what's your name, sis? Sherry. So we have Sherry, we have Marshall. That's your wife? All praises. So what nation of people out here today is not desired? 
we are, right? We walk into the stores and they look at us crazy, right? We move into their neighborhoods, what do they do? They move out, right? Right. They don't, we're not desired amongst no nations. They want to be separate from us, but they want to use us to fuel their economy. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desired. O nation not desired. So we're commanded to gather together and come together as one because that's the main thing that we don't have in our communities today. We, we're not together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So what does it mean to not forsake, Brother Marshall? It says don't forsake, to come together. Meaning don't make excuses for you not to come. You understand? Not forsaking the what? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Right. So we're not to forsake that thing. Read. As the manner of some is. As the manner of some is. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 2. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm giving you these scripts now. It, hopefully, it will provide you with some kind of comfort to, to let you see, okay, you know what? Regardless if my fringes are right, regardless if I'm not 100% right, I need to go ahead and learn from these brothers and sisters that are already there. Because that's what we're there to do. We, we're here to uphold each other. Read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two are better than one. So we heard the Bible tells us to gather ourselves together, right? So it's also telling us that two are better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Guess what? When you work together with your brothers and sisters, you have a good reward for your labor. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right. So if one of us are lacking in anything. If one of us have come up short with anything, in your case, it may be fringes. In, in some people's cases, in, in her case, it may be wearing a dress. In some brothers' cases, it may be keeping their beard on their face. In some people, it's eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. Everybody has a device or multiple devices that may make them fall in the eyes of the Most High God. Right. But if we can't do it alone. It says if one does what? For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. One will lift up his fellow. We're not here to beat our people down. That's right. We're here to bring people in. We're commanded to come out and compel them to come in. That's right. To come into their community. We're going to read that in a second. Read. But woe to him that is alone. But what? But woe to him that is alone. What do you think? It says woe to him that is alone. What do you think that woe means? Right, so what does that woe mean? It's saying woe to him. Danger, right? What do you think woe means, sis? But it says woe to him that what? But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. It says woe to him that is alone when he falleth, right? Because it says two are better than one. Because he has someone to lift him up when he falls. So why is it saying woe to him when he falleth that's alone? Two can't walk together unless they agree, but when you fall and you're by yourself, who's going to be there to help you get up? No one, right? So it's tell that woe means destruction. Destruction to him or her that is alone in this walk here. You understand that? Read. For he hath not another to help him up. Because you don't have another to help you up. You understand that? So now I'm going to ask you, Marshall. And what's your name again, sisters? Sherry. And Sherry. What's your nationality? Israel. You're an Israelite? What about you, sis? Uh, non-denominational. Non-denominational? So that's, that's part of a religion. I'm asking you, like, what nation of people do you come from? Uh, you, I mean, she's probably not convinced yet, Marsha. But that's part of, hey, that, if, by you knowing this information, you got to teach her. And you got to show her that thing. Right. You understand? So we're going to go through this today. As a matter of fact, let's deal with that. Is she going to learn anything that I've learned from husband at home? 14. Corinthians. Let me show you something, Marshall. You have a big job on your hands. Because your wife is not fully convinced yet. Right, Sister Sherry? You're not convinced of what your nationality is. I know. What you know? First of all, I just know that Christ is black. You know that Christ is black? Go ahead. And, um, I know. You know where you come from. 
know, do we come from the land of Israel or the person named Israel? We come from the person named Israel whose name was Jacob. Right? So you know that. So that means your nationality is what? You're an Israelite, right? Right. Well, you kind of shaky on that thing. Yeah. We're going to prove that to you today. Marshall, let me show you what you need to be doing with your wife. Now, read. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Bring it up. Let your women keep silence in the church. That's a big problem in our community today. Why? Because our women are actually leading our community. When you go to church, the majority of the people in the church are women. You have women pastors today. The Most High God said what? Read it again. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Our women are commanded to keep silent in the churches. But it's not about, they can't talk in the church. It's not talking about that. Read. Let me go show you what it's talking about. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Go ahead. But they are commanded to be under obedience. They are commanded to be under obedience. Our women are to be shamefaced. They're supposed to be under obedience unto the man in the church. It's time for our men to wake up and take their rightful place that God ordained us to be at. That's right. Read. As also saith the law. And if they will learn anything. If they will do what, Marshall? You paid attention. And if they will learn anything. If, yo, if Sherry will learn anything. Read. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them do what? Ask their husbands at home. So Sherry. Marshall knows he's an Israelite. You're kind of shaky with it. So the Bible is telling you, you must ask Marshall, how does he know he's an Israelite? And Marshall, you got to be apt to teach her. I know we're Israelite based off of this, 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 and this in the Bible. Right? So that can, you can change that today. Bring it but now our job here is to come out and show the black Hispanics and Native Americans, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. So Sister Sherry, right. we're about to show you that today. Because the question should be, how do we know that we are the Israelites? How do we know that? How do you know that, Marshall? Because it's in the Word of God, right? Give me Romans 8, 16, then we're going to do the right. Because what we'll find out is, by knowing that you Israel, we're required to do something. You understand, Read Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Bible is telling us that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. The spirit itself identifies, we identify with the spirit that we, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the children of God. That's right, we right. are the children of Israel. So what is the spirit that is talking about? Read. John 6. Because we got to identify what the spirit is, right? What is going to identify with our spirit to prove that we are the children of God? Read. John chapter 6 verse 63 yeah, It is yeah. the spirit that quickeneth The flesh profiteth nothing The words that I speak unto you They are spirit uh -huh. And they are life Right so the words that Jesus Christ is speaking unto us They are spirit and they are life So it's telling you that this Bible must bear witness with our spirit To prove without any shadow of a doubt That we are the children of God That's right so that must be written in the Bible. And we're going to bring that out to you today. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Start at verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. It but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. So Moses is speaking to the Israelites, the sons of Jacob, in the wilderness, telling them, it shall come to pass if you do not listen to the voice of the Most High God and do his commandments, read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Moses is telling the children of Israel that all these curses are gonna come upon you and overtake you for not keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Let me ask you a question. Is our slavery documented in the Bible? Yeah. Slavery that we're living to to this day. It is documented. What are some attributes of slavery, Marshall? Well, what happened during slavery? Well, first of all, they came over to Africa. We came over, they came over to Africa and did what? They enslaved us from there, brought us over here. They, right, on what? Slave ships. 
Okay, what else happened, sis? What were some of the attributes? What were some of the things that happened during slavery? They whipped us? Go ahead. They, they taught us what they wanted us to know. Mm, they taught us what they wanted us to know, right? Yeah. Okay, what did they do to our children? Uh, they separated. They, they separated, separated the families, right? What did they do to our women, Marshall? They raped them, killed them. They raped them, killed them, sent them to labor, right? Yeah. All those things happened in slavery. And all those things are written in the Bible. You understand? So let's go through some of these curses today and, and let me know what people this is talking about. Let all of us know, okay? What you got? Give me something. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So how do we come over in slavery? On slave ships. So it's telling you the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what is Egypt? Captivity, Captivity right? Let's prove that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage so Egypt is synonymous with bondage captivity slavery right so go back to Deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt into slavery again with what with ships with what with ships with cargo slave ships did that happen to our people? Did that happen to any other people on the face of this earth? No, right? Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We won't see our homeland ever again. Have we been sent back to our homeland? What's our homeland? Jerusalem. You believe that, Sister Sherry? All right. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the motherland. It is not Africa as we say, as we think of it today. Because Jerusalem is part of Africa. But Jerusalem is the motherland. That landmass right there. That's where we come from. You so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. That's right. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Lord's going to bring you into slavery again with ships, read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The same way Moses said it was going to happen, read. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will never see your homeland, Jerusalem, again, read. And there. And there. In that land that we came over on cargo slave ships, what's going to happen? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. We were sold on auction blocks. Our families were separated, like you said, Sister Sherry, right? Our families were separated. We were sold on auction blocks. Sold unto our who? To your enemy. To our friends. To your enemy. I'm going to ask you a question, sis. Do we have, as, as so-called black people on this earth today, do we have enemies? Who are our enemies? shouldn't be hard. So-called, you said you guess? Yeah, white. White people, right? So-called white people, because they're not white, they're red. Yeah. Red like that stop sign over there. Let, right. let the, I'm going to let the Bible bring it out again, right? So this way it's no I guess. You should know who your enemies are, because it's more than just the white man. Every single nation that is not of Israel is your enemy. Yeah, they're right. completely against what God's plan is for you. You understand that? Read it again. And there, in that land that you were sold to, that you came over on slave ships free, ye shall be sold unto your enemy, unto your friends, unto your enemy, unto your enemies. He didn't say you might be sold unto people that may be your enemies. He said you'll be sold unto your enemies. You must know who your enemy is first and foremost to understand that these people don't love you, sis right and brother. Because we rely on these people for every single thing that we have on this earth today. Right. And because they give us something, we think they're good to us. You understand? Finish it off. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, for slave men, and bond women. And no man shall buy you. And no physical man is going to redeem us out of this captivity that we're in today. How many men have tried to, to get the, the so-called black race straight? 
um, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Marcus Garvey, Stokely Carmichael, Fred Hampton, Desmond Bessie, even the sister Harriet Tubman has tried, right? Were they successful? No, are we better off as a people now, today, in 2019, than we were, matter of fact, on the slave plantation? Are we better off as a people now? What do you think, sis? Are we better off as a people right now than on the slave plantation? Not really? Why, why do you say that? Um, I think we still kind of under You think we're still under slavery? I think we're still under slavery. Okay. Um, they, they give us this and give us that mentality that we're satisfied and um, we're not satisfied. Exactly. Exactly. We are still in captivity today. Let me prove what you're saying, sis. Read. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8 Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity So the scripture's telling us Behold, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans You are yet this day in your captivity Read Where thou hast scattered us Where we were scattered on what? Cargo slave ships Read For a reproach and a curse For a reproach and a curse We are the most hated people on this planet earth I could care less, not understanding that we're under the curse of the Deuteronomy. We're under the curse of God for our disobedience. Read. And to be subject to payment. And to be subject to payments. When you're subject to payments, you are a slave. You understand that? Until, as a people, we start collecting taxes. Until people start paying us tribute. We, are, we will always be a slave unto our oppressors. You understand that? Give me 2848. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. So let me ask you a question. Off that verse 68, did that show you who the Israelites are? Off the one that we read about slave ships? All right, we're going to deal with this last one, and then we're going to go into something that's very necessary for our people, both you, Marshall, and you, Sister Sherry, all right? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48 The question was asked Are we better off today in 2019 As a people Than we were in slave ships Than when we were on the slave plantations Your answer was no right Let's see what the bible says Read Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy We're serving our enemies now We're subject to payment now We work a 9 to 5 to make our enemies rich now Right Read which the Lord shall send against thee. Guess what? Those same enemies that we read in verse 68 that sold us on slave ships, these are the same enemies that we're serving today, and God sent them after us. Get out. Get out. We like to blame the other nations for what they do to us. But the Most High God sent them after us because of our own disobedience. Right. You understand that? Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall get, send against thee in hunger. So if we need water, who do we go to for something that falls up from the sky freely? We have to pay for our water, right? Who does that money go to? Our enemies, right? Read. And in thirst. And in thirst, when we want food and water, we go to our enemies, right? Read. And in nakedness, your clothes on your back. Who do we get that from? Our enemies, read. And in want of all things. There's anything that we want or need in this life here, we have to get from our enemies, from someone else. It doesn't come from our own, our own people. How you doing, bro? Bro, come here, man. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That same enemy is going to put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Let's see this sign here, man. Right here, right here, right here. That yoke of iron on our neck is real. That happened to what people? Our people had yokes of iron on our neck. And who put those yokes of iron on our necks? Our enemies, the so-called white man, the so-called African man, the so-called Arab man, the so-called China man, all the other nations had us in captivity. They are all our enemies. You understand that? And they the ones that put the yoke of iron had us in slavery upon our necks. Read. Until what? 
until. So those jokes are iron. We're going to be in chattel slavery until. Read. He have destroyed thee. He has destroyed us. So guess what? When we was on those slave plantations with shackles and chains, we had a more clearer, more certain mind than what we have now in 2019 at a flea market breaking the most high God's Sabbath day. Right. We understood what God's laws was. We understood who we were as a people. We knew where we were from. We knew who our enemy was. And we did not stop fighting that bastard until he had to beat that out of us. Right. He had to beat that fight off of us to the point where he said, you know what, you no longer need that, new, that, that leash around your neck, so-called black man, because you're no longer a threat to me. You're going to come to me freely for every single thing that you want. Right. I don't have to whip your back anymore. So we are destroyed. Guess what? We had families, husbands and wives back then. We don't have that today as a people. We were taking care of our children back then. We don't have that today as a people. Yoke of iron one more time. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. We will be in shackles and chains on a slave plantation in chattel slavery until when? Until he have destroyed thee. You are looking at the results of a destroyed people today. Right. Completely destroyed. Right. You know. And our enemies did that to us. But the most high is the one that's going to bring us out of that thing. Through right. sending his son, the spirit of his son now, Jesus Christ. You understand that? He's going to save us from something. Because we read the truth shall set you free. He said, save you from your, your, your captive to your sins, right? Give me that in Matthew 1. Because it says no man is going to redeem us out of this captivity. No man is going to redeem us. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Bring it out. And she shall bring forth a son. Mary's going to bring forth a son, right? Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. We're going to call that son's name Jesus. Jesus, read, for he shall save his people. He is the one that's going to save his people from what? From their sin. From their what? From their sin. That is the what? only way we're going to be saved, is if we look to examine ourselves, look at the sins that we're in, see what the Bible says we're supposed to do and do it. Right. You understand that? Jesus Christ is going to save us from our sins. That's the only reason why we're in captivity today. Breaking news tonight. There has been a staggering number of black and Latino teens. A 12-year-old black boy was shot and killed outside. A young black a woman who was arrested for a traffic police. violation a black was man found shot hanging and killed in, in the car. Just three days after the, the police seat. had placed her. The aftermath was aired live on Facebook. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up.
working so hard to serve God And why would I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's our man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.